1270 Dairiki hook. Okay, I just tie in a, a, a little bit of Z-Lon for a, a shuck on a tail. And the entire body is, is a thread body. I'm going to tie in my copper rib and I tie this, I tie it in the same pattern exactly in, in olive and blue and red and gray and brown and even in, with just doing the black, I tie it with both <coughs> copper, silver, red and blue wire and I, I use the extra fine wire for the rib. Body pretty sparse. I don't don't make it very large. What did you call this fly? A homie midge is what the guys at Western River call it. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I haven't got a clue. What was the material you tied on there? I didn't hear you. The the shuck is Zelon. And the thread is just that number 70 denier thread. So tie in a piece of Zelon for a wing case and as a emerger shot. Peacock thorax with two or three strands of peacock. You're putting all this on a 2224? This is actually a 10. Yeah. But I tie, it, I tie it down to 22s and 4s and fish it in streams, but in the still water, yeah. I tie it up to a 10 actually for still water. You guys with teeny little brains and want to catch teeny little fish and make it real teeny. <coughs> <coughs> oh, you just can't help yourself, can you, Mike? I knew it was coming. He sits around and waits for somebody to know. I know. Mm -hmm. What did you expect? <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> fished this pattern both as a merger subsurface and has used it a few places with, with gink on it and, and fish it as a, you know, right in the film, as a, even as a, a trico, trico merger pattern. It works fairly well that way, so just in a pinch. Yeah, it would. Color pattern is nice. What makes you decide the rib color when you're fishing? 
Why would you use blue instead of something else? You know, just sometimes it seems to work, and I really a big difference fishing the the copper and the silver. There's been lots of days where the silver will get a fish every cast, and the copper will not, or vice versa. And I fish uh, LC Ranch a lot, or I used to take customers up there. That was. A lot of a lot of guys in business take people golfing. I took my customers fishing to LC Ranch, and and it it, it was a really good pattern on, on LC. But it was amazing how many days that one color or the other worked. I mean, substantially better. It was just just amazing. This next fly that I'm gonna do is, is one that I just you know tried out this last year, and it worked really well. It's, it's kind of down your ideas. I mean, it, I've done some balanced damselflies before, but this year I really started playing a lot more with ultraviolet materials. And this and I'm tying with the micro UV chenille for, for the body of a damselfly. And I've, I've used both this olive and a brown olive and had, had pretty darn good luck with both of them. So put two glass beads on a piece of heavy leader and melt the ends to make eyes and it works really well for this pattern if you want to do it. <laughs> I'm tying this fly on a mustad. It is a 32833 BLN number 10 mustad hook. <laughs> it's a still that jig hook. It's a, it is a jig hook. Just a, a straight pin that I've cut off huh? to extend the body so I can <coughs> balance the fly. I'm going to tie in about a dozen wraps of O2O lead. Just to make it look pretty, I'll throw a few eyes on it. A foot and a half or two feet under an indicator, but when you got a good chop on the water, it gives the fly a lot of action and it moves just as, I mean, it looks an awfully lot like a, a damselfly cruising the edges. And if you haven't played around with UV stuff, I would encourage you. I've, I've tried a lot of different UV materials that are just coming out on the market more and more all the time. And some of them have been a total bomb, but some of them have been really fun additions to my repertoire. I'm just going to use some olive marabou for the tail, and I, I don't put a real long tail on it. I, for damselfly nymph patterns, I've, I really found that damselflies vary in color amazingly. I mean, from almost blonde, blonde, I, this, this fly here is tied just like a, a 
Yeah, California leech, only with a real with a blonde tail and stuff. Was on Henry's Lake two years ago, and on Hebgen, and on uh, Calder. It was my money fly. I mean, when the, when the damsels are coming off really light, that's just worked out awesome. <clears throat> Calder's the word we don't use with this group. Okay, I'm sorry. They're not supposed to know about it. They probably won't be there next year. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope everybody prays for it. <laughs> What's this material you're putting on? This is, uh, it's hairline micro UV polar chenille. Can we see the package label? Okay. Whatever you do, don't crowd the head. <laughs> I found these patterns are really fun too if, you, if you're taking kids out fishing and you can fix them up with these under a bobber even in a spinning rod and drag them around in a fluke tube while you're in your kick boat and they'll catch fish and sometimes a lot more fish than you do. <laughs> this is the hook is a Kamikatsu S10 number six and it's something my an idea that I tried three or four years ago on strawberry. I don't know how many of you are serious strawberry junkies, but particularly later in the fall, the cutthroats out there will get to where they strike so softly. I mean, I, I describe it as somebody pulling on your shirt gently like that. You can tell there's something there, but if you set the hook, you haven't got a prairie catching the fish. So. I mean, I just, I just keep tightening up lines. When I, I switched from some of the other hooks that I was using to those thin wire gamakatsu hooks, my numbers of hookups about doubled. It was amazing how, how many more of those fish I was able to stick. It's got a real small barb on it, so I, I don't even pinch the barb because it's hardly even there. And it helps keep them on a little bit without damaging the fish. They pop right out. But, Boy, it was it was a big improvement for me for for getting hookups on on bigger flies on strawberry. Again, I'm back to the number seventy black thread on this fly. Is that is that a stinger hook? Is it no, it's not. Just it's a big white gap. It's, a, yeah, it's actually a steelhead dry fly. <laughs> it's a light wire, and that is a downside to them. They're real brittle. I have broken a few of them. Generally, when you uh, had a really rough fight with a fish and then go use it again, I've, I have broken off a few, but it's, it's, it's been worth it for the additional number of sticks. I mean, they are just sharper than blazes when you're working on them. So. I'm going to tie in a rusty brown marabou tail. And I kind of vary this pattern from more subtle colors of brown orange to brighter colors of brown orange. I brought, brought a couple of the different hackle feathers I, and I tie them both ways and there again some days bright works better than the darker. Sometimes I'm going to tie it today with the California leech dubbing. You recognize that a bit. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, Sometimes I use uh, the Arizona Semi Seals. He's got a brown that's a little brighter, and I, I vary him up, and, and both of them work, and they definitely work differently on different days.
that's another trick that I, I don't know if everybody does, but I, my flies stay together a whole lot better if I put a little glue over the body before you start wrapping them. <clears throat> Five or six years ago, this for about three years was my go-to strawberry fly, but it also was a great Henry's Lake pattern and Hepkin and I mean lots of places and it still is. It's not as not as deadly as it was. And why these flies change in and out is beyond me. But I gave one to a friend of mine at Renegade a few years ago when it was just coming on and I think he caught 37 fish on the one fly. <laughs> This is three strands of copper crystal flash. Do a, a dubbing loop from there. Just put a little bit of cement on one side of my dubbing loop. You still using Elf's glue? I love it. <laughs> I dub it fairly sparsely. I don't need it real bulky. I have tied them heavier and bulkier, but they seem to work better a little bit more lightly dubbed. And after I've got the, the dubbing wrapped, I try and get my feather started in my dubbing spinner too, and dub them both together at the same time. And that, that combination just makes an absolute bulletproof <coughs> hackle. I mean, you never have an, a hackle come apart and unwind when you do it that technique. I tie this same pattern with with the orange with with different colors of olive a lot and with olive tails. I tie one olive with a kind of a golden brown tail. We call it the Panguage Special. I, I just work great at Panguage with a, a an olive semi seal dubbing and the orange hackle and the golden brown tail. That's, that shows up <laughs> I mean, same, same idea completely, but really effective fly. Lots of places, not just penguins. This fly I, I tied, I'm tying, was developed on Patterson Lake about three or four years ago in the fall. We got up there, and when we got up there, it was a little too early. This is in Manitoba, and the fishing was really, really slow. That's when the, the Canadian uh, nymph guy was there, and none of his people could catch fish. Oh, Phil Rowley. Yep, Phil Rowley was there, and, and we were all struggling to catch fish. It was really hot, the water was muddy, and my wife, they bless her heart, stuck about an 18-inch rainbow, and it was one of the first fish we'd caught of the day. When she brought it up, she put it on her stripping apron, and it threw up about a hundred these tiny little minnows. And it was 
was almost lunchtime, so I went into the trailer and I tied three of them up. I gave her one and I had one and Jeff Wagner was with me out there. I gave him one and we went back out and started fishing that minnow and in about 10 minutes, the three of us were hooked up at the same time. So, so this is a pattern of luck fly. <laughs> and is, that great, is that gray thread? No, it's uh, Boyd's magic thread. <laughs> what do you call it? It's, a, it's a, uh, and then I'm using the body is a, a mylar ribbon. fly was truly built out of necessity. But now I'm tying it even up into you know, probably a, an eight size and fish it a lot. I've caught a lot of fish in a lot of places with it. You know, it's not just a Patterson Lake special. Looks like so sad. Pardon? What size hook is that? This is a number 12. It's a must add 9671 number 12. 2XL. Yeah. It, I mean, I call it magic because it does so many cool things. Running it between over peacock to tie down peacock and, and doing different things like that with it is, is just phenomenal. Put a little bit of glue on the back of that, and this is this is olive that I use scope and olive and olive uh, pine squirrel to do this fly with. <coughs> Simple and fast is better. <clears throat> Throw a half hitch in there. Rip that. Part way up and make another wrap or two. fishing starvation quite a bit in the spring and messing around with different patterns and I I just test drove one of these out there one day and oh, it was just on fire and I, it turned out to be you know until probably November or December this turned out to be my best fly of the year 
And this is, uh, again, it's a hairline, a UV, brown olive uh, estaz. And it's also, I mean, basically I, I used the, this material, the, the polar chenille, dyed polar chenille, which is a palmer chenille. I've tied them some with it, and, and <coughs> both have worked at different times, but the same technique. But the, the brown olive estaz was probably the best. And uh, we, we were on Hepgen one day, my wife and I, and there were about 50 guys at Rumba Bay. And there were a few catching a fish here and there every now and again. We got out there with this and we just, we just absolutely pounded fish amongst the middle of a lot of fishermen. And, I mean, over and over and over again on starvation, it produced so many fish this year, I couldn't believe it. And it's, it's the simplest pattern I've ever tied in my life, so. <laughs> That's the kind we like. <laughs> Did you name it? Yeah. I, we were, it was on the trip to Island Park when we were, when we were fishing Hepgen Reservoir. I have a nephew that works for Thiokol or ATK, whatever it is called now. And he is literally a rocket scientist. So we were, I was sitting around tying up a bunch of these because we, we'd used them and I needed some more for the lake. And my wife said, Brian, you ought to, you ought to name this fly. You're a rocket scientist and it's a, a UV material. Why don't you give it a name? And he said, well, let's see. The, the UV scale is the angstrom scale. So this is the angstrom 300 and this is the angstrom 400. <laughs> so you, you were starting out real simple, which was good for Whittlesey, but now you may have ruined it. <laughs> Gonna go back to my olive thread for my time. What book is this again? <clears throat> this is uh, the Gamakatsu S10 Six, no, an eight, excuse me, it's like Gamagatsu S10-8. Back to the olive number 70 thread. This fly is so easy, it's almost a joke, but honestly, it's been amazing for me for this, this last year. I'm anxious to see how it works next year if it continues on. Sculpin olive marabou tail. in a fairly good piece of it because it has a tendency to pull apart fairly easy. And the, the palmer chenille is even more so. When I tie in the palmer chenille, I'll, I'll do like three-eighths of an inch piece on it because it really does pull apart fairly easy if you don't get a good piece in. I could make money tying flies if they were all like this. <laughs> Again, to start, I just I just put as fine a bead as I can. Super glue on the hook chain.
and I'm used a, a white zonk rabbit strip and tying the tail about the the same length as the hook shank of the fly, maybe just a hair shorter, but roughly that. And I I like to get the hair separated really good on this one if I can. Off the leather. And then I I put the, the leather down facing me just a little bit because it tends to want to roll over as you wrap the flies. And I hold it there tight with my nail. And I do about six good wraps on there because it really has wanted to come undone on me. And throw a half hitch in. to do it faster, your glue dries on <laughs> Then I'm using this, it's hairline UV olive, it's copper olive polar chenille. There you go. And these, <clears throat> you haven't played around with these Palmer chenilles, they're available in, in both UV and non-UV in, in a zillion different colors. I probably have 30 colors of them and I've had a lot of fun using them. I've made all different kinds of combinations with, with both rabbit and uh, squirrel. When I do squirrel, if I can't find, some of these are available in a, in a medium chenille. Some of them are only available in this, the standard length, which this one is. When I use this on rabbit, I cut about 50% of the length of the chenille off before I wrap it. Then I'm saving that stuff that I cut off and mix it with different dubbings because it really does make some interesting colors in dubbings. Now this one I'm tying a pretty good sized chunk of that because it really does want to untwist and pull apart as you're going. When I tie that in and the trick to making this fly work when you first start off is once you get that material tied in, take your rabbit and go over the top and come around the back side and then you pick up your your chenille and you probably can't see that very well on the camera but I've, I've got the, all the palmer chenille so that it's laid out towards the tail and I hold it and my the leather of the rabbit in my fingers at the same time and start to wrap it forward and depending upon your rabbit, sometimes you need to brush it out about every other twist. This is, now it's just starting to ball up on me there, but it's not too bad. I pull the Palmer chenille forward and get all the loose fibers out and get rid of it. And follow back around with the white rabbit. Try and separate it there. I'm tying this with black rabbit, with red and purple, and also with the copper olive. I do ginger rabbit, I do uh, gray rabbit, I mean, olive rabbit, and same with squirrels. I mean, I've caught fish on just about every combination that I've tied, but this one has been by far the best of all, all of the ones that I've experimented with. And you're not using a cross cut, you're just using a no, it's straight zonker. zonker cut. Yeah, zonker. Yeah. Cross cut goes nuts on it. It does not lay back at all well with a cross cut. Build a little head there. Again, I kind of overdo everything on this one so they don't come apart. And now that I'm doing this extra steps with the super glue thing, double wrapping the head and stuff there. They're holding up really well. I can even fish it all day with one fly now. So. Just comb it out and it doesn't, you know, my, my feeling is it kind of looks like a chub minnow when it's in the water and 
it's it's been I mean it's accounted for literally thousands of fish for me in the last four years. So it's one worth having in your box. I call this one the Energizer Bunny because it looks pink in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Same look. Again. Same look. Yep. Yeah. It's a four X. Four X long. Yeah. That's the Gamagatsu again. Yeah. This is the S eleven S. It's too heavy. Four long, straight eye. I. I have a love affair with straight eye hooks, and I have no explanation for it. I just kind of like them. <laughs> After I've cut it off at the <clears throat> head, I like to trim the end of the rabbit a little bit so it tapers out a little so it's not quite so blunt. It doesn't look like a club tail in the water. And this one I use the Airlines Red UV Medium Polar Shoe. The first ones I tied, I tied with the long version and it, it worked and I was catching fish on it. But it, I, when I found this medium, I thought, you know, that'll make it a little more subtle and not quite so gaudy. Show the label. Pardon? Show the label. Yep. It's, it's almost a third the length of the Palmer chenille on the regular stuff, so it really does make it more subtle. And, and again, I, when, when I tied these, I fished them with a bunch of different guys, and I gave about half of them the regular one, and the other half this fly, and this fly way outfished the, the one with the full Palmer chenille. stuff in the wrapper and I shouldn't have pulled it all out. I find that if you just, on these Palmer chenilles, to control them, rather that they're expensive enough, you don't want to cut off a piece for each fly or you'll lose so much material. So I find if I just leave it in the wrapper and pinch it, I can leave it hanging and you don't waste <coughs> nearly so much material. And again, the trick to tying these patterns and why it makes a big difference, I don't know, but if you go over the top first, with your leather and get it laying flat and then organize your palmer chenille so that it's all pointing towards the tail before you start to rotate your material. It makes all the difference in the world. Flies don't look like an awful lot, but I 
promise you they were. I call it a, a black and purple matuka. You know, that's, that's about what it is. So it's real simple, but again, it's been uh, early to, I mean, like the end of August going into November, it's probably been one of my very best patterns of strawberry. So, you know, Fishing it deep again? Fishing this one deep. Yeah. Mostly on my Type 7. Okay. To magic thread on this fly. <laughs> Special. Yep. <laughs> and this again is the S11S Kamigatsu. <laughs> um, there's a fly shop in Ennis that has them in hundred packs that I've been buying them at. And I, so I just ran up there and buy some. On the internet? <laughs> they're on the internet, but this, they don't show this one on, they show the down eye, the S11 on the internet in, from their fly shop. But they do have it, but it doesn't show on the website. But I've had Western Rivers order them for me too. Pardon? That's the one overlooks the burger. No, no, it's right in the middle of town. Madison River? On <coughs> yes, Madison River. Across from the cafe. Madison, Madison. Madison. They put out a catalog, and it's not in their catalog. Oh, I, I don't know. I just looked online. It, it showed the S11, but it didn't show the S11. When I went through there, I some of it. I've ordered them before, but I saw them, so I stocked up. <laughs> this is a just a purple crystal chenille, and it probably has a real name, but I call it four purple crystal chenille. <laughs> Again, I tie the tail roughly the, the length of the hook chain. Same trick, tie it in facing me just a little bit with six good wraps. on the other side. Then I run my thread about a third of the way up on this one and separate the fur again. This thread is, I mean, it just glides through the chenille, doesn't hardly fold down a piece of it and disappears. And this one with the, with the Manitoba minnow on the smaller stuff using the rabbit, I, I make a full collar out of the fur, but when I do it on these. The, the rabbit fur is so so long it 
hides too much of the belly, so I, I just tie this and in across the top. <laughs> and trim it off. And then I just take a little bit of a tuft and put it down underneath and get it the length that I want so it doesn't cover up too much of the belly of the fly. Simple patterns, but real effective.